The nation of Panama is well known for its rainforests, the Panama Canal, and for its popular tropical islands. Yet, something which also exists that many people are not aware of in the country is volcanic activity. As marking the tallest point within Panama is the towering peak of the Baru volcano, which reaches an altitude of 3,474 meters or 11,398 feet. While much of its edifice might look highly eroded and thus quite old, this is a mere illusion. Part of this fact is hinted by the widespread light brown plains which go down Baru's western slopes, which now has tens of thousands of people living on top of it. This material is not only mud, but rather represents the extent of repeated pyroclastic flows which scorch the landscape up to 15 kilometers away from Baru's summit during the last 3,400 years. The most recent of these overlapping pyroclastic flows was in place during Baru's last eruption in 1550, when a moderate-intensity explosive eruption generated superheated gas and ash currents alongside depositing around 3 inches or 7.5 centimeters thick of ash on its summit. And if you just go slightly further back in time, Baru has also presumably caused fatalities, as shown by the abrupt abandonment and presumed destruction of the Cerro Punta archaeological site in the early 8th century. Today, while Beru is fairly quiet, it occasionally is the site of volcanic earthquake storms, with three such events occurring in recent years, specifically in 1965, 1985, and 2006. And yet, there are a few features that make Beru stand out among all of the world's volcanoes. For one, while every nearby nation such as Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and Colombia each contain more than a half a dozen volcanoes, Panama only contains a single active volcano, Beru. Beru is seemingly isolated near the very southeastern edge of the Central American volcanic arc, with its existence being owed to fairly recent subduction of the Cocos Plate underneath the Panama microplate. But the reason why geologists around the world visit this volcano is the fact that it marks the site of the single largest volcanic landslide or debris avalanche to occur during the Holocene Epoch, aka since the year 9700 BCE. This debris avalanche caused a large portion of Beru's weakened slope to collapse to the west, causing landslide debris and hummocks to eventually cover 973 square kilometers of the landscape. This reduced Beru's height from what was originally a 4,000 meter or 13,123 foot tall volcano involving 30 cubic kilometers of material, a full 12 times larger than the debris avalanche Mount St. Helens produced in 1980. This was not the first collapse Beru produced, as sometime before 43,500 years ago, an even larger collapse in the same direction occurred, covering 1,156 square kilometers. Beru has been intermittently erupting for approximately 500,000 years, during which time it has constructed a 16-kilometer wide volcano out of overlapping layers of lava and ash. Most of these eruptions involved andesite lava and erupted via what is known as a Merapi-type volcanian eruption. In other words, viscous lava domes would form on its summit, some of which would overlap each other, with the steepest portions of said lava domes occasionally tumbling down slope, giving way to pyroclastic flows. Depending on the source in question, Baru has erupted between 6 and 10 times during the Holocene, with the largest eruption likely generating a 16-kilometer high eruption column in 700 CE, leading to the emplacement of more than a meter thick of ash in some areas in a VEI-4 explosive eruption. While a future eruption of Beru is almost certain, it statistically speaking is likely to occur several centuries from now. Due to the landslide scurps from Beru's two major debris avalanches, the most significant hazards, aka pyroclastic flows, are most likely to be guided towards the west-southwest towards around the city of Volcan. However, almost the entire region, including to its east, has experienced lahars during Beru's lifespan, indicating another potential risk. As a final note, I would like to thank this channel's patrons on Patreon and channel members on YouTube.